from the outreach studios at the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences at Penn State, this is Weather World. I'm Fred Godowski along with Paul Knight. Welcome to Weather World on this Friday night, a day where the wind is blowing. It feels like a new air mass is coming in. It does, Fred. It almost has that feel of autumn, but that means we would have skipped all the way from spring to autumn. I think, uh, I think we'll have a feel of winter tonight, actually. Okay, and in just a moment, Paul will be giving us the details of the weather for the next couple of days. Also tonight, uh, it's a Friday night, we will have an extended forecast. And we will have some special goodbyes later in tonight's show as well. But now standing by with tonight's weather, here's Paul. And I'll say hello as far as the weather concerning today. Um, by the way, this is the setup that we were the very first show back in 83. Fred was the host, I was the forecaster. The graphics are in order today, however, like in 83 they were not. Here's a view of Lewistown starting this morning. Watch how some clouds come flying in as a front uh, moved through the area and behind it the winds picked up even considerably this afternoon and there it is a starch flag at the Lewistown Courthouse and it looks like a a very pleasant afternoon temperatures or I should say from the up in space 22,000 miles out we see what that what that looks like and there are those clouds that move through the central part of the state here in this region late in the afternoon there are some showers embedded also a few sprinkles in the southern counties near the Mason Dixon line but they are going to be history before the sun even goes down the temperature has been dropping in the northwest where the winds have turned out of the northwest and have fallen into the 50s not not just uh, because of the cold lake, but because the air is cooling off too. Southeast, where the front is just passing through, it has gotten into the 70s, but the air mass is also quite dry. It's hard to believe there are really any showers reaching the ground because the dew points are generally in the 40s, uh, low 40s and upper 30s. These temperatures, in fact, pretty much from a line like this are what the likely lows are going to be tonight in parts of the state. So indeed, there's going to be a freeze warning and there'll be a frost uh, watch if we can do such a thing. I guess I just made up a, a new term uh, that will be in part of the central counties. If we take a bigger view of the whole nation and see what the temperatures look like, uh, in spite of the cool air that's coming across from Ontario into the northeastern U.S., uh, once we get west of that and into the, where the sun has been shining all day today, upper Mississippi Valley, even into the plains of central Canada, temperatures have gotten into the 70s. But there's a lot of clouds in the middle of the country, and that's where it's been raining and the temperatures are quite cool. So Denver's having a day like we had yesterday with uh, temperatures in the 50s and a fair bit of rain around. And that extends all the way down to Texas. Look at the southwest, 62 in Los Angeles. Um, that's really chilly for the latter part of May. And you'll see why, because uh, there are more clouds coming into the southwest as the disturbance marches uh, in from the uh, eastern Pacific. And this is the large disturbance that looks like, in fact, you look at the clouds, you say, whoa, they're going to be here tomorrow, Paul. But the upper air level flow pattern, and Fred will talk more about that in the extended, but at least in the short range, a big ridge is going to build and the flow is going to look like this. So all those clouds which look like they should come into Pennsylvania are going to head and set up into the Great Lakes and eventually uh, turn their way around into Canada. Here's the evening surface map, big high pressure system centered over Michigan is going to be the chiller for tonight. Uh, the front has virtually cleared Pennsylvania and it'll be moving offshore. This disturbance is going nowhere quickly. It'll just kind of mosey its way uh, out of the Four Corners area and eventually get, I guess it's into Colorado tomorrow. Uh, where there'll be even more showers and thunderstorms in Texas, torrents in Texas. High pressure will be moving to our south, which is good. That means the flow can turn to the southwest and the warm air can turn the corner and come in in time for the uh, holiday weekend, although it'll take probably to later Sunday and Monday. Freeze risk across the northern tier of the state with temperatures some places getting into the lower 20s, so more than six hours of freezing temperatures. This is the domain in here where you'd be concerned if you have some tender vegetation, you want to cover it tonight. Southeast, really no risk of frost. Winds will lighten and the clouds will clear. Do go gentle into that good night tonight. Tomorrow, it'll be a burr start with temperatures near record levels in parts of the state. But wall-to-wall -wall sunshine, 14 hours and 40 minutes, just 20 minutes shy of one of the longest days of the year. Puffy clouds in the north, few cumulus on the high ridges. Otherwise, a, a sunny day and temperatures getting very close to 70 in the afternoon. Not as cold tomorrow night, but still cool in the eastern part of the state. And there'll be streamers of clouds coming in during the day Sunday with uh, temperatures recovering to near or getting above 80. We'll be back with more in a moment.
Well, as we head into the extended forecast uh, through the Memorial Day weekend, starting um, next Monday, of course, is Memorial Day and then beyond. They say Memorial Day is the traditional start of summer and boy, the atmosphere is going to uh, coincide with that idea. Let's take a look first at the water vapor image over the past couple of days. As uh, we put it in motion, you'll watch uh, the disturbances that are uh, coming up in what is actually a pretty big trough, a uh, chilly air mass that has come down over the northeastern part of the United States. Uh, but that is in the process of bottoming out right now, and it is going to lift away, and hence the beginning of the process of returning to warmth that will happen relatively quickly. In fact, by 6 o'clock on Monday, looking at the upper air pattern, those of you who know anything about the weather, look at this, with a big ridge already starting to build. Now, we'll have some residual dry air, some residual coolish low-level air to get rid of, but it, we should get rid of it relatively quickly as we go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, warm up, and uh, you'll watch that ridge get quite strong along the East Coast. Uh, there it is, really strong on Tuesday, and then it goes down the road and uh, remains relatively strong, although a little wrinkle looks like it's going to come through late next week, uh, and that may provide some reduction in temperature and humidity, but not a big one. Here's how it looks on the humidity tracker. We've brought it back after a winter of not having to worry about feeling uncomfortably humid. Here it is. Remember that on this blue is the beginning of uh, drier air that um, maybe a few people will notice as uh, not being totally dry. It's with the greens and oranges that are the very sticky kind of air, uh, particularly as you get into the dark greens and then oranges. As we put it in motion, it starts dry, but even by Tuesday late, we're seeing some oranges, some very humid air, and uh, that will continue. Notice each day a little orange shows up Wednesday, and there's that little reduction in humidity that will be more noticeable in western PA, but there'll be some reduction everywhere as we get on to Friday. And of course, there will be showers and thunderstorms in a summer-like pattern like this, but not a lot of them. Monday looks like an ample sunshine day, still relatively comfortable, then increasing humidity through the early to midweek, spotty thunderstorms, uh, but not most folks not getting one, then uh, cloudier uh, in the west as the front comes through, or weak front with some thunder showers in many areas on Thursday, reduction in humidity, look at this, some parts of Pennsylvania in the east, over 90 degrees each Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That's a heat wave, and we will be back in a moment with more. Even though there's a lot more show to come, we're going to squeeze in a recap right now. Okay, Fred, and the only weather concern tonight is actually tonight, where there'll be some freeze in the northern counties of Pennsylvania, some patchy frost in the central valleys, especially in the Poconos and also in the central mountains. Uh, a chilly night for sure. Tomorrow, the sun comes out, wall-to-wall -wall sunshine, temperatures recover into the uh, mid-60s to low-70s, and Sunday is a very pleasant day, and Aladdin on a scale of 10 which is an interesting number that only Paul Knight knows. And uh, this is one of those times that we do here occasionally during the spring season where someone is graduating. And in this case, Paul Knight is graduating. This is his last in the flesh show with us. And so the traditional question, Paul, is, uh, what are your uh, immediate plans? Well, now I've got my degree in hand. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I intend to have an opportunity to spend a little bit more time with my grandchildren. I have three of them in Colorado. Not, it's not imminent that I'll see them, but it'll be more time. And also, I will keep my hand in the weather business by doing some consulting with uh, kind of in the commercial research sector. Okay, and, and our floor manager, Marissa Ferger, is helping. We always give the parting person a little something. And in this case, I want... Oh, my goodness. Uh, if we can do this... Wow. Oh, look at that. Oh, grab, my grab goodness. That. Oh, look at this. Whoa, whoa, it's a wet you know whoa. how you feel a little chilly occasionally oh, when you're getting whoops. older? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Well. Right. <laughs> so I'll wrap myself in this, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so is Fred's mic. My microphone <laughs> came off. Oh, oh mine, mine is safe, at least temporarily. Uh, so well, I'm this is very kind. And oh. by the way, I had no idea what was coming. So this is, this is all, nor do I know what's coming up for the rest of the show. And indeed, very quickly, Paul, uh, how do you think about the last 32 years? Well, Fred, this? you know, I like to think of the fact that you and I were commissioned back in 83 to actually open a weather restaurant <laughs> and the cuisine was unique uh, in the in that time in terms of the things we were serving um, and it's changed a bit over the years but now this chef's going away and the more expert chef is going to be remaining 
for you folks. Well, it's been great working in the kitchen with you. And likewise. And uh, now, as I said, there was a lot more coming in the show. And as we do from time to time at, on occasions like this, it's an excellent time to take a look back at just how much fun you've had. <laughs> This is Weather World. Labor Day weekend, end of the traditional right. summer. Is this the end of summer weather? No, it isn't, Fred. As a matter of fact, it is not the end of summer weather for any of us. In fact, we're going to have another very hot, humid day coming up tomorrow. All across the state, we'll see conditions uh, back up in the 90s in the eastern part of the state. In fact, let's take a look at conditions at uh, late this afternoon all across the Pennsylvania area and to our west. And you'll be able to see, whoops, we have the satellite picture instead. And on this picture, you'll be able to see that uh, actually most of the state had a fairly nice day today. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Weather World. Obviously, we're not in central Pennsylvania, but we're in central Florida at Walt Disney World. Well, we're here. We finally made it. We're as high up as our camera crew would let us get. Actually, five feet higher. We're at 12,000 and five feet above sea level. On more than one occasion, meteorologists have been known to compare a sultry summer day to being in a sauna. But believe me, just one minute inside this tarred room would prove them all wrong. So take the photographs and cell frames in your mind And your honor shall be good health and good Sure is another hot one, Fred. Right you are, and it's nice to have a cool, frosty one on a day like today. It's only water, folks. I know one cool it here. <laughs> We've been out. Gee, Paul, it looks like there's water up in the road up there. Uh, I don't think we should bring a finely tuned vehicle like the Weatherworld station wagon through it. Let me go up there and check it out. Okay. Hey, Fred, have you hit water yet? would make a great question for weather-wise Pennsylvanians. When was the last ice age? Good question, Fred, but uh, you better get to work. You'll open. It's mostly in the mid-20s, southeastern part of Pennsylvania, and there goes the map, so we'll go to the next one. <laughs> you know, we've been accused of coursing around just a little bit too much here on Weather World, and that's really not the case. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Among, and here's still another accusation. <laughs> Something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life.